Uh, joining us right now to talk a lot more about this worldwide market implication of the stress on Evergrande is Alliance and Gramercy advisor Mohamed Alarian. He's also the president, of course, of Queens College, Cambridge. Good morning to you. Um, I'll ask you the question we've all been asking all morning, which is, is there a real prospect here of contagion? I mean, we're seeing it already, Andrew. Um, and we're seeing it because what's happening in China is shaking key tenants of this global investment theme. You know, it's easy to say the Chinese government is trying to strike the balance between, on the one hand, punishing excessive risk taking, and on the other hand, not having a systemic event. That's easy to say. To do is much harder. And what that results in is people are questioning one of the tenets, that it, which has been the government will always stand behind the financial sector. It's not, not at least as yet. Now, add to that what has been um, an attack on various sectors, big tech, education. I mean, the list is long, as you know, and it's shaking this notion that China is an investable market. But I guess the question is, is it, a, is it that it's not an investable market right now, meaning this is a transition period? Or do you believe that this is shaking people's faith that it's an investable market forever? So it's certainly the former. And there are people who are talking about the Lehman moment for China. I don't think we're there, but, but that is out there. Um, so we don't know about the latter. Um, but remember, the context is important. It's coming in, a, in, in when China, Chinese growth has been losing momentum. It's coming at a time when U.S. growth has lost some momentum, when the Fed is facing a very uncertain time. So there's a lot of uncertainties. You know, I've said over and over again, the big question is, do you get a market accident or a policy mistake that shakes the behavioral condition of markets to always buy the dip? Um, and we are going to be tested over the next few sessions on this. Well, and that's the question then. There's a lot of uh, U.S. investors that are thinking to themselves that very question. Is this a dip to buy or is this a dip that continues? And that's the great question. So far, the buyers of the dip have gotten hurt. And this is one of the longer dips that we've had for a while. Um, so we'll see. You know, it, it, it is the conditioning is deep. But the Fed on Wednesday is going to also have a huge influence. So there is this uncertainty as to whether the Fed continues with QE infinity. We know that, that they want to give some sort of timeline, but the assumption is that the timeline is still further out. And if push comes to shove, the Fed will delay it. I think they should have moved already, as you know. I look at the demand side, I look at the supply side, the economic reasoning is there. And you could do it in an orderly fashion had you started moving already. The longer you wait, the smaller the window right. for an orderly tapering. 